Oh, the lights. Hello, Fresh Cat. I'm delighted to be here. Now, I have a joke for you. And if you understand it, please raise your hand. You know, there's three kinds of people on Earth. The ones who know how to count and the ones who don't. Okay, good. So let's get started. <laughs> Calculation is considered as a basic skill we people should possess. And it's often compared to writing and reading, right? But humanity has been around for four and a half million years. And for almost all that time, it's been able to evolve and function perfectly without writing and without reading. The question is, if we would have even survived if we didn't know how to count. Math does not only organize our calculations and help us perform them effectively. Math provides us with the complex tools, the advanced models, and the complex theories that enable us to raise above basic creatures. Thanks to math, we reached both the nano and macro level of comprehension of the universe. Deadly epidemics got mathematically modeled, leading to eradicating diseases and boosting our life expectancy from 20 to 80 years within a very short period of time. Math-based quantum physics has stunning conclusions, leading some physicists to think that an observer has an impact on the output of their experience on the infinitely small level. Algebra, geometry, analysis changed our lives. They underlie all technological miracles we have witnessed. They literally made us who we are. So do we even think about that? But every time we have an issue, we turn to math. For us as a species, math means power, control, understanding, it is our ultimate source of power. Without math, humanity would be helpless illiterates. And the more math we develop, the more powerful we become. So I started asking myself, could this be true at the individual level too? Meaning, could it be so that you and I get more powerful and gain more power the more mathematical competence we acquire? So I formulated this hypothesis and started considering it. I'm not a formal mathematician though, I'm a mechanical engineer, but I had the privilege to study a good deal of abstract math in my sweet homeland of Algeria. I had great teachers and amazingly engaged parents who taught me to persevere. Without them, I would probably today still be chasing the crazy dream of becoming Whitney Houston, and it wouldn't have ended very well for me either. Instead, I developed a close and highly emotional relationship to the subject of math, and I wanted to share its unexplored psychological benefits with whom it may interest. So I started writing my book on how math builds up success psychology because it showed patterns clearly suggesting that the mathematical training and problem solving boosts personality skills. Furthermore, being the same skills that we need to become successful and meet our goals in life. Determination, perseverance, creativity, and problem solving orientation are all key personality success skills and they're all well targeted by the mathematical training. But let my talk today focus on the empowering benefit of math on us individuals. The way I feel empowered by math is the way it triggers modelizations in my mind without me even thinking of it. So one day I was sitting in the bus with my 11 years old daughter casually mentioning to her the 10,000 hours rule, arguing that, according to research, after 10,000 hours of deliberate practice of a subject, your brain steps into the expert competence zone. 
it gets profoundly altered by your subject, and your subject becomes like a second nature to you. So it hit me. I thought, I wonder how much free time we dispose over for you between your ages of 5 and 20. And to do that estimate in the bus, we broke down her life between 5 and 20 to one typical day, arguing really that when you're a child, you don't need to do more than just sleep, go to school, and eat. And so when we calculated a decent <laughs> evaluation for these activities, and we withdrew them from 24 hours, we got to the conservative figure of two hours a day, okay? Two hours a day times seven days a week is 14. And then you have to add the seven times that's released by not going to school on Saturdays, and of course on Sundays as well. So we ended up at 28 hours a week, which we rounded down to the convenient figure of 25 hours a week, okay? And so that way we could just multiply it by 50 to get the amount of time that is freed for a whole year. That's it. And then for 10 years, you will have this amount of free time, 12,000 hours. And if you want to calculate the amount of free time for 15 years, you just add half of it to it, right? Because that's for 10 years. So that will make it 18,000 hours. Actually, if you do the exact calculation, you will end up roughly above 21,000 hours. So this clearly suggests that you do dispose of the temporal room to become a complete expert in two fields, right, by the time you turn 20. Or half an expert in four fields by that time. So a part of that time is actually used for whatever you're doing. Now, two things will be important from here on. Firstly, that this time of 20,000 hours will be spent doing something. It won't just evaporate, right, unless you don't survive. You will actually spend 20,000 hours doing something. And the second thing is that you can predict what you're going to be high at if you keep track on figures. You just need for one activity, a given activity, to evaluate the average amount of hours that you spent weekly doing that and compute the ratio to 25 hours. So let me give you an example. Let's say that you study one hour a day all week long all year long and you push in an extra three hours on saturdays and two hours on sundays that will all make it together 12 hours and the ratio of 12 hours to 25 hours is roughly 50 percent so this means that by the time you turn 20 years old you will become a complete expert in studying of course, you will not study that time when you're five to, say, 10 years old, but you might be able to compensate for that between 17 and 20 years, right? If you go to Taekwondo and you're there three times a week for two hours each time, you will be totalizing six hours, and the ratio of six hours to 25 is 25%, that's one fourth, and that will bring you to this half expert position by the time you become. 20 years. Unfortunately, the clock would tick the same way if you fill your hours doing nothing or just wasting them. And when I grew up in Africa in the 80s, it was a different story. But today, doing nothing for my daughter would more probably be exposing herself to any type of dopamine generating immediate rewards types of activities anything ranging from gameplay that children do to pointless surfing on social media that teens do. And if you do that for two hours a day, you will pile up 14 hours a week. And the ratio of 14 to 25 is more than 50%. And by the time you are 20, guess what? You are a professional time waster. 
And somehow your brain will be marked by the dopamine kicks, the distractions and interruptions, and so on. And I'm no psychologist, so I cannot evaluate the effect of that. But I'm just telling you that the math behind brings you the possibility to predict that. So you become what you spend your time doing, according to Marcus Zuckerberg. What do you spend your time doing? Bill Gates puts it this way. We tend to overestimate the impact of what we do for the coming two years, but we underestimate that impact for the coming 10 years. So what do you want your life to look like in 10 years' time, and how can you act on it here and now? Just to end my, calcu to end my calculation, I wanted to mention that I didn't take into account the time that's freed by 10 weeks of vacation that you have as a child every year between these ages. And if you do that estimate, you will roughly end up at 5,000 hours. So that's also an amount of time that you get to do what you choose to do with, hopefully for a better tomorrow. Now, what calculation would change your life? What would you do differently if you knew how it translates into figures? What power would you gain over your life if you could inject numbers to support your areas of interest or goals? What aspect of your life would you master better if you modeled it mathematically? What is your issue and what is your model to it? Whether you want to save money work more effectively, or start the project you dream of? I believe mathematical modelizations are your most precious ally. Math is often believed to be related to talent. It is so not. Math skills are skills, and you will get better at them the more you exercise. So bring forward your mathematical thinking every time you reason about small and big ideas. Break them down into pieces and introduce involved numbers. Ask yourself, what parameters are key here? How do they interact with each other? With each other? Quantify your goals and always try to measure deviations to be able to act on them. In one word, mathematize your life to take control over it. Do the math, do your math. Thank you all very much. <laughs>